Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to go ahead and get prepared for our Bible study. Thank God for new beginnings being present with us via Zoom. Amen. Mother and my wife and my dear, my dear wife and my brother and my mother and Miss Nora Jean. God bless you. We're going to pray before we sit down and get started. But bow our heads. The gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you, your presence on tonight, just thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. Thank you for being the Lord of our lives. We thank you for your love, your unconditional love, Lord God. We thank you for all your hands have provided. We thank you for your word, for we know that thy word is true. We know that thy word is our strength, our guide. We ask that you would be, your presence would be with us tonight. You said we're two or three would gathered together in your name that you would be in the midst. We give honor to the spirit of Christ on tonight for being in our midst, Lord God, to continue to lead us and guide us, prepare us for your return. Yes, Lord. We pray, Father God, that you would set upon each and every one of us on this night according to your will, according to our needs, and we'll praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank God. For you all being present on tonight. We have another class tonight. This one is entitled uh, In the Power of God. In the Power of God. And we're going to deal with that. We'll be coming out of First Corinthians, the second chapter. Our focused verse is the fifth verse. We thank God for you, for each and every one of your, your views on Facebook and YouTube. Excuse me, we pray that you will continue to follow the word of God. Know that he would uh, bless your faithfulness unto him and to his word. But we have a, uh, a class tonight, a good class tonight. Thank God for y'all being present for the Holy Ghost have impressed upon our minds that uh, this this is a good one. Naturally, this First Corinthians, so this is Paul speaking to the church in Corinth in Corinthians, and uh, so I'm I'm gonna read First uh, Corinthians second chapter. I'm gonna read verses one through five. Only verse 5 is on the worksheet, so you can just follow along in your Bible. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2nd chapter, verse 1 says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Verse 2, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Verse 3, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That's what we're dealing with tonight, in the power of God. The fourth, the fourth verse, the fourth verse, Paul says, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Enticing words in that text is uh, words of persuasion. Paul is saying, Paul is saying that his preaching, it did not come with uh, persuasive words of man's wisdom. And so we have to understand that the Holy Ghost have impressed, the Holy Ghost have impressed upon us tonight to, to, to teach with, with, 
with this target in mind that our faith has to stand in the power of God and not in enticing words or not in the pers persuasive words of men's wisdom. I know I know men uh, I know we can speak you know psychological and philosophical and it's very very persuasive. This is what Paul is saying. He said, but he said, my preaching, I didn't come with enticing words. He said, I come knowing nothing except Christ and him crucified. Because our faith should not stand in the enticing or persuasive words of men's wisdom. But our faith should stand in the power of God. Now, faith says expectation, hope, confidence, belief, fidelity, and steadiness. Uh, stand is to be firm, to trust, take hold of, establish, and power is virtue. Catch, I, catch that one. Power is virtue. It's strength, it's might, right. it's rule, and authority. So tonight, tonight, that's what we are trying to impress upon the children of God, is that our faith, or our expectation, or our confidence, or our hope, should not stand in the persuasive words or wisdom of man, but it should be firm and, and, and established in the authority of God, in the strength of God, in the might of God. This is what Paul is letting them know. That our faith, our trust, our expectation, our hope, our confidence should stand or be established in the rule, in the might, in the strength, in the authority of God. As the body of Christ, that's why one scripture says we cannot uh, be moved by every wind of doctrine. We have to stand in the uh, we have to be firm and we have to be established in the might and the power of God. Matthew, Matthew 9 and 6 says, But that ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then says he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. Now, dealing with what we're dealing with tonight, uh, the understanding tonight is that for a child of God, our faith has to stand in the power of God. This is Jesus telling this man, this paralyzed man, this man that they brought to him. He said that, that you would know that the Son of Man has power, that the Son of Man has authority on earth, that the Son of Man has the strength on earth to forgive sins. This is what we must understand, that Jesus has the authority, the power on earth to forgive sins. This is why, this is why we cannot, this is why our faith cannot stand in enticing words of men's wisdom. Ah, uh, because men's wisdom will, uh, men's wisdom speak, will speak light of sin, will compromise. And there is no compromise in God. All unrighteousness is sin. 
And so men's wisdom have a way of making you and I feel, feel good about sin. Persuasive words, enticing words. But the truth of the matter is we should be convicted of sin. Not made to feel <laughs> not not Come on, preacher. not made to feel that uh well everybody's doing it. And since everybody's doing it, you know, no, we're not made to feel that way. We 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 ought to understand that Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation, unto the forgiveness of our sins. And our faith, our expectation, our confidence, most of all, should stand in the power of God. Uh, Matthew 28 and 18, we're familiar with that. He said, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. This is after Jesus had resurrected and he was getting ready to ascend and he was getting ready to commission his disciples. He's letting them know that all power, all strength, all might, all rule, all authority has been given unto Jesus in heaven and earth. And then in Matthew 28, 19, he goes on to commission them. But he's letting them know that everything that they do basically said without being said, uh, it has to be done in the power of God. And later on, those same disciples would be filled with the Holy Ghost and then they will be led of the spirit of truth, the comforter, which is the power of God. And so we have to understand our expectation, our hope, our confidence must stand in the power of God and not in enticing words of man's wisdom. That's, that, is a, that is a situation <laughs> that goes all the way back to creation because they didn't stand in the power of God. They were uh, Eve, scriptures say Eve was in transgression because of sub, the substitute, the, the craftiness of the serpent. Same, the same thing spiritually. You have to stand in the power of God what God word, what God's word has said, that's the authority, that's the power. And, and you and I cannot be persuaded uh, by enticing words of man's wisdom. And so that is, that is the same that is the same thing with worldly wisdom. The world's wisdom, uh the world through wisdom, they know they don't know God. They don't know God. So we can't stand. We can't establish our faith. Our faith cannot be established in worldly wisdom because it is enmity to God. It's hostility against God. It opposes God. Our faith must stand in the power of God. And the power of God is the word of God. And he has empowered us with the Holy Ghost, his spirit, that we would have the strength to endure and, and overcome and maintain all these things by our faith. And so that's where our expectation and our hope must stand. Luke, uh, Luke 8, 43 through 48. But 46 is the uh, is the verse we want. So I think I'll just read that because everybody know what this is. This is dealing with the lady with the issue of blood. Luke 8 and 46. Scripture says, and Jesus said, 
Somebody has touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. Everybody know this story. This is a lady that had an issue of blood for 12 years and went to all the doctors and spent all her living and nothing better, the Bible say. Never got better, only got worse. Until the day when she said in herself, determined in herself, that if she could just touch the hem of his garment or touch his garment, then her issue would be made whole, would be dried up. Her, her faith stood in the power of God. She went, she went to all the doctors. She went to all the doctors. Because that's what uh, that's what we do. This is not a, a kick against doctors. We we need doctors. But this is more, but this is more of, of an understanding of where our healing comes from. Our healing comes from God, the power of God. Listen right, to what right. listen to what uh Jesus told her. He uh 46 verse, and Jesus said, Somebody has touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. Now, when you look up that word virtue, that word virtue says not only is that word, not only is virtue morality, moral, and all that, but virtue is also strength and power. That's virtue. And so, when you look at the text, Jesus is saying, "I felt my healing power go out. I felt virtue. I felt the healing power." Uh, go out of me. He said, I felt, I felt it. He said, who, who touched me? And you know the story, the, the disciple said, why you ask who touched you when all these people was thrown in and bumping up against you and touching you? He, he like, no, 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 not, not, not them. <laughs> he said, who has touched me? He said, I felt, a, I felt a healing power go out of me. All right. You and I must understand if our faith, if our faith is, uh, if it stands in the power of, of, of God, then we, just like the lady with the issue of blood, we can determine in ourselves if we could just but touch Jesus. In other words, Faith says, my expectation, my, my hope, and my confidence is, is in the fact that he has the power to heal me. And the Bible, lets, right. us know, and the Bible lets us know that hope make it not a shame. The, uh, right. the, the Lord, you and I will never be made ashamed if we put our hope in the Lord. That's the Bible. Each preacher. Our 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 faith or our expectation must be in the power of God. He said, "Without faith, it's impossible to please Him." Uh, John ten seventeen and eighteen. Seventeen says, "Therefore, does my Father love me." Because I lay down my life that I may take it again. Verse 18. No one take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. Your faith, my faith, must stand in the power of God. Here you see Jesus himself saying in 17, he said, therefore does my father love me because I lay down my life. In other words, he's, Jesus is saying my hope, my confidence, my expectation is in the power of my father. 
He said, hereby he loved me. He, lo he said, therefore does my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it up again. Your Bible and my Bible say he that saved his life shall lose it. But he that loses his life for the, the gospel sake or the sake of Christ shall gain it. Not only shall we gain it, but we shall gain eternal life. But he that saveth his life shall lose it. We're talking about our faith standing in the power of God, not in the wisdom of men. So many times our faith stands in the persuasiveness, the persuasive words or wisdom of men. And it's supposed to stand in the power of God. Our expectation, our talking about faith. Faith is our expectation. Faith is our hope. It's our confidence. And that is supposed to stand in the power of God. Uh, Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. How many, how many of us ever been oppressed? And we was quick to take up the philosophy and wisdom of some man. Because you know we can all, you know, we can always, you know, you know, we always know how to fix each other's problems. But the error, the error, the error for you and I as a believer is that the scripture tells us God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power to, to do good and to heal all, all of us that's oppressed by the devil. Song, songwriter says, oh, uh, what, uh, when he say, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, what griefs and sins we bear. Yeah. And oh, what it, we often forfeit. Oh, what peace. Oh, forfeit. oh, what peace we often forfeit. Because we don't carry everything to the Lord in prayer. Our faith. Paul is telling the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 2 and 5. That's our focus verse. He's telling them that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We have to understand that the church is a body of Christ, and we are a we are a body of uh, called out believers, born again believers, and our faith. Uh, is supposed to stand in the power of our Redeemer. That's right. Our faith is supposed to stand in the power of the one that liberated us. Come on, Pastor. There is no, there is no way you and I should be uh, moved by every wind of doctrine. There's no way you and I should be falling for the persuasive, enticing words of men's wisdom. When, when you, you and I didn't redeem ourselves. All right, preacher. Our, our, when the word speaks of faith in this text, he is simply saying your expectation in my expectation, your hope and confidence, my hope and confidence, it should stand or be established in the power of God. Right. Come on, preach. 
David. Yes, David is a great application for that. David and Goliath. Everybody know the story. So David goes down there to take the food to his brother Nim or whatever. And he hear this Goliath defiling the Lord God of Israel. We know the story. And David, paraphrasing, David ends up accepting the challenge. You know the story. And Saul, Saul tries to get him to put his armor on. <laughs> And David said, I can't fight with this. I'm paraphrasing, but I'm in there. David say, I David say, I can't fight with this. I haven't tried this. In other words, Saul tried to persuade him, tried to entice him uh, to use his, his armor. That that would spiritually speaking, that would be the same thing as uh you know, trying to uh, entice and persuade David with his wisdom. Oh, this, this, uh, this armor, this armor, this armor. But David say, "Look, I haven't proved that armor. I can't use that armor. I haven't proved it." David said, "I was tending the sheep." And a, and a bear came, took my sheep, I went and got it. A lion came and took my sheep, I went and got it. He said, uh, all, I, all I have to fight with is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, basically what he's saying is what we're supposed to say. He's, right. he, he's telling Saul, he even stood and told Goliath, he said, you come at me with, with these sticks and these swords and staffs. He said, but I come at you in the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord. Our faith is supposed to stand in the power of God. Even in the midst or before our enemy. Even if our enemy is giant. Our faith, our expectation, our confidence, our hope is supposed to stand in the power of God, the authority of God, the rule of God, the strength and the might of God. Not in our strength. He said not by our might nor our strength, but by his spirit, said the Lord. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to jump down. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 1 and 5 verse 5 for our gospel came not unto you in word only but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake the gospel uh, I will read Romans 1 and 16 before I deal with that Romans 1 and 16 says for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The gospel, the gospel is the power of God, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God. Jesus died for our sins, and he rose for our justification. This is the power of God that we die to sin and be risen in the spirit. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. You and I can't be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of our sins, get out the water, and still continue to live in the sin of the flesh. Listen to, listen to the power of God. The power of God is the death, the burial, the resurrection. That's symbolic for repentance of sin, the burial, 
It's baptism in Jesus' name. And the infilling of the Holy Ghost is the resurrecting, the walk in the spirit of life, the newness of life. This is the power of God to take the old man, crucify him, and raise him up anew. We just read, uh, we just read John 10, 17 said, therefore does my father love me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. Hear what the spirit is saying. We can't go through the process and come out the same. All right, that's right. Our, our faith is not in the power of God if that's what we do. Our faith is still in the power of the wisdom or enticing words of men. Because you can't save your life. You have to lose it. Scriptures say that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He said, he said, you don't put new wine in old wine skin. He said, if you do, you're going ru to ruin the skin. It's going to burst, and you're going to lose the wine. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Our faith must not stand in the wisdom of men and his persuasive, enticing words. Our faith must stand in the power of God. In other words, our expectation, our hope, our confidence must be in the power of God. And so I'm going to give it up right there. I can't, I ain't no need to keep repeating that over and over. And I can't good. say it in any other language, so. All right. As it is always, we encourage you to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Scripture said, except the man is born again of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We thank God for each and every one of you that have logged on, that is present. The Lord is only trying to save us and, yes. and still ain't nobody mad but the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody mad but the devil. The, the word of God said the Lord sent his word and it healed them. The, the word of God, the word of God comes to, to heal us, to deliver us. Amen. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed because we have the word spoken to us. Those that those that don't have the word spoken to them, they can't be delivered. They say, how can how can they hear without a preacher? They say, how can they call on in whom they haven't heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? So if, if he's a preacher of God, then he speaks the word of God and not and not enticing persuasive words and wisdom of men. Let us pray. Let us pray. I'm going to give it up. Bow here. Dear gracious and heavenly <laughs> Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come tonight thanking you once again for the visitation of your spirit. We thank you for your word. We pray, Father, that it would fall on good ground and it would saturate our hearts and minds. Give us the confidence and the strength that we need to put our trust, our hope that we would entrust you with our entire life, Lord, for we know that you are not pleased with anything less, Lord God, that we must offer up the praise continually, which the, the sacrifice of praise continually, which is the fruit of our lips. We thank you. Yes, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise yes, shall continually be in my mouth. We thank you for your word on tonight. We praise you. We glorify you. We ask that you will set upon each and every one of us according to your will, according to our needs, and we'll praise you. And we'll glorify you. Take us from this place, but never from your presence. Bring us back again at the appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. How are you doing? I'm blessed. Amen. 